Every Sunday morning in New York, the bells of St. Patrick's echo through the city, beckoning Catholics and non-Catholics to the cathedral's massive bronze doors. Well, everybody, welcome to Sunday Mass here at uh, St. Patrick's. We call this America's parish church. We got over six million people a year that come through here. So they want to see St. Patrick's. May Almighty God have mercy on us. And there is a lot to see. A neo-Gothic landmark modeled on the great cathedrals of Europe, St. Patrick's interior is bathed in natural light through a prism of stained glass. An expression of uplift and hope, deeply rooted, says New York's Cardinal Timothy Dolan, in the American experience. Almost all of the great ethnic parades, Columbus Day, the Steuben Day Parade, the Puerto Rican Day Parade. We begin with a mass here at St. Patrick's. St. Patrick's Day, of course, being the biggest. It was the flood of Irish immigrants in the middle of the 19th century that gave birth to St. Patrick's. Fleeing famine and persecution, Irish Catholics were met with hostility here in America. But they found a champion in this man, Archbishop John Hughes. His nickname was Dagger John because he would stand up and defend the rights of his people who were very poor and were very forgotten. And he said, we want to make a statement and I want to build, he called it a cathedral of suitable magnificence to, to make the statement that Catholics have arrived. They are at home. To make his statement, the archbishop turned to the aristocratic James Renwick Jr., designer of the famed Smithsonian Castle in Washington, D.C., and considered the premier American architect of the time. Ah, you brave Irish people, wherever you be, I pray stand a moment and listen to me. Your sons and brave daughters are now going away, and thousands are sailing to America. It took more than 25 years of mostly immigrant labor to realize Renwick's vision. And when its twin spires were completed in 1888, St. Patrick's stood as the tallest building in New York City. But after years of neglect, the cathedral was showing its age. This cathedral, simply put, is cracking. The bricks are crumbling and falling. We want to clean our beloved cathedral, and we've got a little sample of what that'll look like, right? Which is why in 2012, Cardinal Dolan announced a restoration of St. Patrick's at an eye-popping price tag. The, the restoration is costing $175 million. Yeah. At the same time, parishes, schools yeah. are being closed. Here's the only answer that I can give. We had to do it. It was survival. The cathedral is built uh, out of Takaho marble. Takaho marble is a beautiful, wonderful stone, but it's very soft. Architect the, uh, Rolando Crayer of the firm Murphy, Burnham & Buttrick was charged with overseeing the daunting task. And we found some areas where uh, the, the stone, the Takaho marble, to the touch, it would pulverize in your hand. Some 30 stories of scaffolding was erected outside and inside, allowing tradespeople access to every inch of this massive structure, to clean and re-leaden panes of glass, restore more than 9,200 organ pipes, and remove soot from the cathedral's 19 chapels, including its most popular, Our Lady of Guadalupe. She was just added with the gift of the Latino immigration. Now this shows a continued uh, presence and gift of the immigrants who have always found a spiritual home at St. Patrick's. Way to go, you guys. Good job. Thanks for all you're doing. Just as the original laborers and artisans had done, the restoration work was performed largely by hand and by a new generation of immigrants like Peter Cuffey. You're taking out a nail that someone banged in there maybe yeah. 120, exactly. 30 years ago. Exactly. I have to try and make it look exactly as they had it, you know? I have come over here and watched them with toothbrushes 
to get into some of the, some of the nooks and crannies of, of the marble. The restoration process has taken three years. Why am I ever eager to get this done with? Yeah, to, to be able to walk around and the well, noise I think and the interview. All. No. no. <laughs> and like any building of its age, the cathedral has its secrets. You stand underneath it and say, oh my God, how did I build this cathedral out of stone? And then when we started working on it and we go up to the attic, we realized that it is not stone. To save money after the Civil War, the whole upper half of St. Patrick's was constructed of wood and plaster. Yes, it only looks like marble. Project engineer Kira Brady. So this is the ceiling of the cathedral. Uh, this is all plaster. It's painted to look like stone, and they come in in line with the gold paint. So when you're standing on the floor, it looks as if it's stone. There have been some sobering discoveries as well like the markings left by firefighters on the walls and windows of the cathedral's south spire. When the firemen come to inspect it up there, they will carve their names. Huh. And when we were doing the restoration, uh, they thought, should we cleanse all of these and sand these out? And we said, absolutely not, particularly because before 9-11, when the firefighters uh, came here for the inspection and they carved their names in, and those men lost their lives. Mo, this is the crypt below the main altar, okay? Also now, kept within the cathedral not, are many of the church's past leaders, including the remains of Bishop John Hughes. There he is, and I got his cross here. And the man known as the Catholic Billy Graham, the Emmy Award-winning Bishop Fulton Sheen. He's the most popular preacher we've ever had. I pray every day to St. Raphael to guard me when I fly and when I travel. TWA, travel with angels. And Milton Burrow used to say, how do you get better ratings than me? And Fulton Sheen said, I got better riders, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. <laughs> Papa Francesco, welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral. <laughs> pope Francis's journey to St. Patrick's on Thursday marked the fifth time a pope has come to the cathedral. No other church outside of Italy has hosted more papal visits. A tribute to America's parish church, now restored to its original luster.